Although it's true that God does not really need us, I do believe He does need us to be obedient if He wants His will done on this earth. God commanded you to do what He said. The freedom to choose evil as an alternative was not part of his original design. If it hadn't been for Satan rebelling against God and deceiving you into thinking that you had such an alternative, we would all be doing what God wants without any thought whatsoever to the incorrect theory that God gives us the free will to disobey him. The Bible was not written to validate and uphold this world. It was written to destroy this world and build the kingdom of God. So quit using it to correct the problems that mankind faces. Use it to build a completely different world and let the old world deal with their own problems. If you try to help it by using the Bible, all you do is prolong its agony because its destiny has been already determined. And that is one of ruin. And that is what you should want to see happen to it. You should not be happy that God allowed His Son to die for you. Although it's true that this has saved your soul from going to hell. And this should make you filled with great joy. The fact that Jesus was killed for you should make you also feel guilty. That is why he was a guilt offering. You should feel guilty that God had to resort to it because you were so guilty of being wicked. God is the father of the peoples of all Tongues. No matter what language you speak, you can now hear the truth. The name Church of God and Church of Jesus Christ are synonymous. The Holy Spirit cannot sin. It is not my flesh that makes me Jesus. It is the Holy Spirit in me that is Jesus, the sinless one. As long as I try my best not to sin and I remain faithful, the wrongs that I have committed in the past will have no bearing on the matter of whether or not I am Him. Because if they really did, then God would have chosen someone other than me be the Holy One. Please quit pointing out my faults. I'm very well of them, and I'm doing the best I can to get rid of them. Instead of putting me down, why don't you try to help me overcome them? If you belong to the kingdom of God, you will no longer be judged by the courts that man has established. We will be judged by God's courts. Because the best discipline comes from those who love us. A theocracy may not be a government ruled by the people, but it is a government that is genuinely for the people. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bonds which have co connected them with one another and to assume among the powers of the earth a separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitled them the decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. 
the Declaration of Independence, 1776, United States of America. This gives us the authority in America to do what we are doing because it proceeds the Constitution. You are allowed to alter and abolish the form of government you now have and start a new one if the one you have is against your happiness. We need to separate and form a parallel government. The United States will now have a theocratic government as an option for the believers to join. I believe this will greatly increase our happiness. This new separate government is voluntary and only for the children of God. Those who do not love the truth that we are fathered by God and wish to remain apart from us may do so. They will have the old democratic government available for them. This model of government, governance, of separating believers from unbelievers shall be the model that we will use in every country of the world in order to build the kingdom of God. I knew, do not come to destroy the Jews. I come to make all people Jews. I do not come to destroy mankind. I come to destroy the present world that is destroying man. I've either started a thousand years of peace or a thousand years of war. When this is all done, a lot of you are going to owe me an apology. Into God's hands I commit my spirit. If God wants to me to be a true prophet and accomplish all things, then it is up to him to pour out my spirit on all. How can the Muslims say Jesus is a prophet and then say everything he said about being the Son of God is wrong? I would prefer that if they are not willing to say he is the savior of the world, that they wouldn't say he is a prophet either, because what they are really saying is that he is a prophet who lies, or in other words, a false prophet. Now, of course, theologically speaking, the same reasoning could be used by us with Muhammad. We could say he is not a prophet because he lied when he said Allah begots none. But the truth is, I do think Muhammad was a prophet from God. And as an unlettered prophet, it was those who wrote down and twisted the message he gave that are to blame for what seems to be false statements from him. As an unlettered prophet, meaning he couldn't read and write, Muhammad had to use scribes to write down what he said, and I believe that it was the scribes who were demon-possessed and whose real motive was to discredit Jesus that changed what Muhammad said. You have been living in a society where you have to sell your birthright in order to eat. If you don't work for the man, you don't eat. I have been sent to build a society where you can spend all your time praising God and doing His work and still eat. I may not have everything, but I am still abundantly blessed.